Welcome back guys. We are working on the case swap through it once again. And today's project is upper control arms, both front and rear. I'm just about done with them. I've made some awesome progress over the weekend and I'm excited to show you guys what all I've gotten done and how I've done it. We're gonna dive right into it today. Let's go. We won't dwell on CAD drawings for too long, but it's an important place to start. I've got both upper control arms for the front and the rear drawn up. And we need to translate these to two dimensional drawings that we can then put on our workbench. I've drawn these arms as accurately as I can using the parts that we're going to be using in real life down to the smallest details. I've made a few changes to them since you guys saw me draw them up in the last episode, including making them longer, which is our overall goal here. Using Fusion 360, I'm taking these and making a dimensioned drawing like you see here, which we will then print out onto paper at a one-to-one -one scale. We've got all our important measurements on them, like the angles that we need to bend our tubes to, and I've got a few miscellaneous measurements that I can use to line up the pieces of paper since I can't fit this all on one sheet. But what we ultimately have are sheets of paper with a one-to-one -one drawing of our control arms that we can build over top of. With these drawings affixed to the workbench, we can simply copy what we see on the paper and take out any guesswork involved. We're gonna start this out with our hind joints and our threaded tube bungs. I've chosen 5 8 hinds due to their strength and load capacity for this project. And the tube bungs that we're using are so that we can thread those hind joints into our material, which does bring us to the material that we're gonna to use to build these control arms, which is one inch, 120 wall DOM tube. Now I've covered what DOM tube is in the past, but as a refresher, it is seamed tube that has been drawn over a mandrel to make a consistent, strong piece of material. This material is going to be really good for our control arms because not only is it strong, it's very easy to work with and easy to weld, and it's gonna play well with the tubing bender and the dies that I have. Now, before we can actually build anything, we've gotta make some tools. Some of you may have wondered why my workbench is covered in holes, and I'm finally gonna show you why. I ran over to Home Depot and bought some classic woodworking clutch style clamps, and we're gonna modify these to make them work with our current project. Now you could buy what we're gonna make right off the shelf, but it tends to be kind of expensive, and I'm interested in making my own. So we're gonna take these brand new clamps and run them right through the bandsaw and cut the fixed head off of every single one of them. I bought a handful of 5 8 shouldered bolts that we're gonna use, and we're gonna cut the threads off of these as well. The reason being that these bolts fit perfectly in the holes of the table. Now you may have figured out what we're gonna do, but if not, stay tuned. It'll make sense shortly. I ground the head smooth on each bolt so that I can weld to them. And then I sat down at the workbench and got to work. Now I'll shamelessly plug while I'm welding these up. If you're enjoying this process or you wanna support this build, be sure to subscribe and come back for all of the episodes. There's a ton of work left to do and I'd love for you guys to join along. If you're already subscribed, leave a like. Apparently that's what the algorithm likes these days. With the last clamp welded up, it's about time to show you guys how these things actually work. You'll see that the finished product is admittedly kind of goofy looking, and if you don't know how they work, you'd probably assume they're totally trash. But check this out. The bolt end of the clamp slides into the table as suggested earlier, but because the arm of these clamps sits at an angle, we can tighten down the threaded end, which will bind the clamp in place and hold our part down. Now I'll actually use those clamps here in a minute, but while I was welding I had the falling bandsaw cutting parts because we have one other aspect of these control arms that we need to solve. What we don't have on hand is this part at the end of the control arm, the tapered sleeve that will attach to the ball joint on the spindle. These need to be custom machined to fit the taper on the ball joint, which I don't have the ability to do. However, I do know that the part that we need will be one and a half inches in diameter, the same as this tube. So for the time being, I'm gonna use this tube as a mock-up. And once we get the machined part, we'll cut these out of the control arms and replace them. Now let's put everything we've seen so far together. I'm gonna to cut a hole in our template so that I can put one of our ball joints in place, lined up with our template and unable to move. At the other end of our template, we're going to clamp our temporary ball joint sleeve into place so that it can't move. And 
with the sleeve locked down, we've got two fixed points between which we can put a piece of tube. All we have to do is bend it to the dimensions on our drawing, and we've got half of a control arm finished already. And here you can see some control arms finally starting to take shape. These are just mocked up and set into place. They're not tacked together or anything, but it's a good proof of concept and I'm liking the direction this is going. You can really see how these things line up with the template underneath them and how that makes this entire process a lot easier to pull off. Now, aside from the CAD drawings, I'm building everything else by hand, including all of the coping. This could be done in a tubing notcher with a large bit, but I find this process easier to perfect with an angle grinder. So I'm using my trusty battery powered angle grinder and of course the JD squared tubing bender for this job. With all of our parts made and our control arms mocked up, we need to make the bracing that will go between the arms. We need to do this for a couple of different reasons. One, to add rigidity to these control arms, and two, because if we are going to cut out these temporary tapered sleeve bushings, we need to make sure these arms are not gonna move around on us. And this is what I came up with. I cut them out of eighth inch plate steel on the bandsaw and then cleaned them up on the belt grinder, making sure to get all of the edges nice and clean and the corners rounded out. With these braces done, it's time to move on to welding all of these parts together, or at least tacking them for now. I've got a bunch of new welding cups that I ordered from Michael Furick, and the one I'm gonna to use today is this Pyrex cup that'll not only give us good gas coverage, but it'll give me even better visibility of what I'm welding, and I'm excited to try it out. I also wanted to show you guys this CK Worldwide flex-headed TIG torch that I've been using since they sent me it about a year ago. And if you don't have one of these, I can't recommend it enough. It's great for hitting all of those hard to reach angles. I started the welding process out by attaching the threaded bungs to the control arm tubes themselves. And I put a decent bit of weld on each one because I'm assuming I won't have to take them back apart. I'm not fully welding anything yet though until the control arms have been installed on the car and I can confirm that everything works the way that I want it to and that all of my suspension geometry is accurate to how I've drawn it up. I already know I'll have to redraw and rebuild two of these upper control arms to make a slight change to them, but I'm not too worried about it because this whole process has gone pretty smoothly. I tacked everything else together so that these control arms could be considered loosely complete, although not fully welded. And then I had to do this entire process over a second time because what you've seen here is just the construction of one upper front and one upper rear. We need two of each. So off camera, I did the rinse and repeat and made two more. And here we have it, the finished result, four upper control arms. And honestly, I'm happy with how they've come out so far. There's still a lot of finished welding to do and we need to get those outer sleeves machined. But this is a really good milestone and it's a huge step forward towards getting this car back on the ground. You can see I've rotated all of the heim joints back to the correct orientation for actually mounting them. And so it really is just a matter of getting our final pieces and getting these things finish welded. Well, that and building four more of them. All right, guys, there you have it. That's four complete control arms aside from our tapered sleeves for the end. Hopefully we'll have those sooner than later. I've got to make some changes to the rear control arms before they're ready to go on the car, but the front should be ready to bolt on as soon as I have my misalignment spacers. So we're making steady progress. Hopefully on Thursday's episode, we'll have all four lower control arms built as well. I've got the lower ball joints and sleeves for them on the way. So with a bit of luck, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and we might actually be able to bolt the spindles onto the car by Thursday, if not by Tuesday. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. Make sure you guys come back. Check out the next episode. We're going to keep pressing forward. I'll see you on Thursday.